Every song has a story. And the carols of Christmas are linked to a world of fascinating legends, ideas, and history. This is the Annotated Christmas Songbook. Novik Priyan. Come on over here. We don't want to get separated in this crowd. <laughs> These Christmas markets are great, huh? And Edinburgh's is first rate. You think it's crowded now? <laughs> Wait till we get closer to Christmas. Edinburgh's is pretty typical of the European Christmas markets. They find a wide open public place like Princess Street Gardens and then they set up stalls to sell their wares from mid-November into January. <laughs> and look at the merchandise. Handcrafted toys and ornaments, farm fresh produce, oh, and food. Just take in the aromas. Oh, yes, if you're hungry, you'll have a ridiculous amount of choice. There's the regular British fare, such as sausage and meat pies, but you'll also find German bratwurst and Spanish churros and, uh, of course, being Scotland, haggis. Freshly prepared and ready to eat. <laughs> and you can just feel the carnival atmosphere. You can't ignore the giant Ferris wheel and Starfire, especially at night when they're all lit up. But this market also has a Santa train, Christmas tree maze, and a roller coaster. And of course, the street musicians, <laughs> like the young piper over there. The happiness is infectious. Yeah. Edinburgh, well, and Scotland in general, certainly knows how to celebrate Christmas. Not bad for a country that only recently legalized Christmas. You hadn't heard about this? Oh yeah, uh, Scotland banned Christmas over 300 years ago. They only made it an official holiday uh, in the middle of the 20th century. Well, of, of course, Christmas had been celebrated in Scotland for centuries before it was declared illegal. Also, there was, you know, the celebrations of the National New Year's Feast, which the Scots called Hogman. But in the 17th century, the Puritans rose to power. Being the dour and grim people they were, they banned Christmas along with other public festivities. Eventually, they lost control of the United Kingdom, but unlike the other British nations, Scotland did not legalize Christmas again. Even though it was quietly celebrated by some, Christmas remained off the Scottish holiday calendar well, for centuries. It's quite likely this was because Hogmanay was the more popular festival. While the rest of the world's holiday calendar focused on Christmas, the Scots took pride in their great New Year's festival with its own special traditions. Like the Hogmanay lads, traveling door to door, singing and beating hides in exchange for a treat, or the welcoming of the first footer, the first visitor to a home in the new year who brought luck to the house, as long as they weren't blonde. Or, um, you know, there was also the tradition of singing at midnight to welcome in the new year, which probably sounds familiar. As the world became more connected in the 20th century, the celebration of Christmas gradually grew in the Highlands. It finally became a public holiday in 1958, and the Scots never looked back. Hogmanay is still celebrated, but now Christmas is the bigger of the two winter festivals. As this market clearly proves. Merry Christmas! Hey, hey, there's this great Scottish carol you should hear. It was written back in the 19th century when Christmas was still, well, off the books, as it were. Here's the Christ Child Lullaby.
This has been the Annotated Christmas Songbook, created and written by David Belke. The Christ Child Lullaby was performed by Linda Grass, Tom Edwards, and Gwyneth Price, with Cindy Zuby on the bowed sultry and Axel Sparks on the upright bass. Recorded by Tom Edwards at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Intro music by Aaron Kenny. Outro music by Ease Jammy Jams. The Annotated Christmas Songbook is a production of Holy Trinity Anglican Church and the Acme Radio Project.